Shut your mouth and listen to me. I run this house, I run this family, and you will tell the lie. Who the hell do you think you are ordering me around? Me? For the last time, I will not have you. You won't have Make you think about it when I cut your allowance. You dare. That's my money, my share of the business. Not yet, it isn't. Not for another six months. And you will stay in this house as long as I am responsible for it. What are you, my brother or my keeper? Keep out of my life. You will not leave this house while I am responsible for you. Try and stop me. Try it and I'll kill you. Lisa! Brotherly chat. She needs a whip. Lisa. Oh, it's business, of course. Uh, no concern of mine, but... Have you thought what's going to happen when Lisa's 25 and comes into control of her share in Jean Drouin and company? Yes, Father, I have. Yes, well, when that happens, you're going to need more than a whip. Yes, Father, if it happens. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. What time shall I pick you up? Uh, well, about half past two, quarter to three, I think. OK, Bob. Enjoy your lunch. The Count Danceval, Mr. Ah, Danceval. Very good to see you. Do come in. Mademoiselle Lisa says she'll be down shortly, monsieur. Yes, well, there's no hurry. You tell her the Count and I are going to have a drink before lunch. Bob, how nice to see you. You do sit down. You have a whiskey. Thank you. You haven't been here before, have you? I know. It's all uh, you're most impressive. Uh, who is he? Oh, that's Grandfather, our founder. May his soul rest in peace. <laughs> well, here we are. Help yourself to serve. Thank you. I've organized lunch here. You don't mind, do you? My dear fellow, I don't quarrel with a free meal nowadays, wherever it comes from. I'd have suggested the club. You're the soul of delicacy, Richard. You wouldn't know, of course, that they chucked me out last week. I did hear, yes. Some nonsense about a check, wasn't it? Uh, what did they tell you? Something about you signing it with the wrong name. As a matter of fact, this is the check. I've collected a few more of the same kind. You've nothing to say. Huh? I'm listening. Good. Because I have a small proposition to make. Uh, that sounds very interesting. See, I'm very worried about my sister Lisa. The way she's carrying on, she ran up in the hands of some waster who was only after her money. Now, I want to find the right husband for her now. Why tell me? I, I don't suppose I'm the candidate. Oh, I don't know. I've known about your little liaison with my sister. It's been going on for quite some time. How very clever of you. I thought we'd been most discreet. Quite the grand passion. Well? Well, I think that you might be just the man I'm looking for. After all, you are a dancer of our, And my sister's a terrible snob.
evening. Filthy night. Mind if I have a look? No. Oh, you've really kept her in great condition. What year would she be? 37? 38. We don't make them like this nowadays. Certainly don't. I bet she really goes. That eats up the miles, all right. That was a shot. Yes. Came from behind that window. If you don't clear off, I'll call the police. I am the police. You? What do you want? Do you know the time? Are you going to let me in? Well, then, where is it? What are you talking about? The room where the shot came from. There's been no shooting here. Right, we'll see about Excuse that. Excuse me, Just Mr. A minute, I'm from the police. I tell you. Stupid place to leave a table. Who is it, Louis? Who is this? He says he is a policeman, Monsieur. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought it was my father coming home. <laughs> What's the trouble? He says he heard a shot in the house, monsieur. Well, you must be mistaken, officer. As you can see, there's been no disturbance here. The shot was from this house, monsieur. I heard a scream, too. They came from the middle window of the first floor. That would be my sister's bedroom. But she's been asleep for several hours. May I see the room, please? Oh, uh... Louis, I left a cigarette burning in my bedroom. Monsieur. Have you a warrant? No, monsieur, but... I take it you've not exactly been on duty tonight? Some police festivity? Where I've and been, monsieur... And you had a car backfire. I heard a scream as well. <laughs> no doubt. All the same, if you want to see that room, you'll have to come back with a warrant. Good morning. I'm afraid I've got to see it now. My name is Richard Gendreur. Does that mean anything to you? No, monsieur. For a policeman, you are not very well informed. Perhaps you know the name Maxime Lebret. He's the minister. Yes. And a personal friend of mine, and a member of my club. He would not be amused to hear that a drunken member of his force insisted on entering my house and tried to invade my sister's bedroom. I am not drunk, monsieur. That is a matter of opinion. I heard a shot. I got to see that room. I've seen to that, monsieur. Thank you, Louis. I take back the drunk. Shall we say, inexperienced and in need of a lesson? You still insist on seeing that room? Yes. Then follow me. What is your rank? Sergeant. Junior grade. You haven't much to lose, have you? Lisa. Lisa, may I come in? Yes, who is it? It's me, I'm sorry, I have to disturb you. Are you decent? Just a minute. All right. I have someone with me. He says he is a policeman. What does he want? Well, he says he heard a shot from this room. 
Is this a joke? Is it? Well, ask your question, Sergeant. But I he wants to know if you scream. Is he mad? I've been asleep. What's he doing? Oh, I think he wants to make sure I've brought him to the right room. Is he satisfied? I don't know. Are you satisfied? What is that door, mademoiselle? My dressing room. Do you want to see it? We mustn't conceal anything. Well, here it is. And that door? Ah, it's a drawing room. And beyond that is a staircase to the outside. As you see, my sister has a private suite. Now, is that all? As you see, there are no stone jewels, no bodies. Or did you want to have a look in the wardrobe? No? Or under the bed? No. Then let me give myself the pleasure of showing you out. I'm sorry to disturb you, Lisa. You can go back to bed now. Oh, follow me. Sergeant, was it? How long did you sit up writing this? Three hours, Patron. When did you get to bed? I didn't. You've been to a party, haven't you? Yes, my sister's engagement. Yeah. <laughs> was it a good party? I was not drunk, Patron. I heard the shot. I heard the scream. I saw the curtain move. Yes, yes. It's all down here. It's a very good report. Patron, you asked to be reminded. It's ten to. You're the first witness. All right. Uh, Lucas. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this report of La Pointe's? Ah, yes, very good, very good. Must have been some fun, eh? Don't rub <laughs> it in. Look, Patron, why did they keep me waiting all that time? Him and that butler. They could have been cleaning up the room. And the sister, she hadn't been asleep. How do you know? Well, she still had makeup on. Hmm. Yes? Ah, right, thank you. The judge's car's arrived. Oh, that's all right. Monsieur de Gasque always has to pay his little visit first. Hmm? Now, La Pointe, you say you saw this car outside? It was an old uh, open de la Haye, white. Mm -hmm. And the driver? Short, a bit like a jockey. I'd know him again. Morning, Patron. Uh, morning. Evening, La Pointe. Patron, there's a body in the Rue Bercy on a building site. I have no time for bodies today. I'm in court. I'll take it. All right, it's waiting for you in the morgue. Good party, eh? Look, I've had just about enough ah, of this. Ah, I don't ah, ah, you. Ah. We love you. Oh, Patron, I am right. Just give me a chance to prove it. La Pointe, do you know who these genres are? Hmm? Grocers? Grocers. When you have one shop, it's a grocers. When you have a thousand, it's an empire. And you go knocking on their door at one o'clock in the morning. If you'd found only one thing amiss in that house. Well, did you? What about the... Uh... 
The curtain was caught in the window. They must have had the window open to clear the fumes from the gun. I'll tell you what I'll do with you, Rockwood. I'll send you on leave. On leave? Yes, for 24 hours. It'll do you good. But, Patron... Of course, what you do in that time is your own concern. Just find that car. Hmm? And don't go near the Gendreau. And don't drag us into it. I don't want any rockets from the director. Yes, Patron, thank you very much. And it's my case? Yes, we won't interfere. <laughs> You'll be Chief Inspector, yes? Yeah? Uh, I wonder. Well, what's the time? Good heavens, why didn't you tell me? I did the moment you came in, I said. Oh, pipe, pipe, where's my pipe? I think Lapointe took it. What? Louis. You leave him to me. I gave Germaine some dresses. Not enough to shut her up. So I'll take care of her. You leave everything to me. Yes, that's what you want, isn't it? Everything. Well, listen to me, my little emperor. You're in this as thick as I am. Just remember, I'm coming back. And then you're going to pay. You're going to pay double. Oh, bust! Hall's full of luggage. Yes, sir. Um, Lisa's taking a trip, Father, on the spare of the moment to America. I'm shutting up the house. Well, definitely. What about me? Well, uh, the servants are all going to the chateau. I'm only keeping Louis. You'll have to go to the club, I'm afraid, unless you care to go with the servants. The car is ready, monsieur. Ah, thank you, Louis. Well, enjoy your holiday. Make it a very long one. Goodbye, father. Goodbye. Lisa! Now, look here. You two have had your rouse before, but never anything as bad as this. Now, what's going on here? It's business, Father. You wouldn't understand. If you'll forgive me. Yes. Yes, this is Richard Chantre. Who's that? You don't know me. I'm a friend of Bob Dornzaval. Dornzaval, that's right. I'm a bit worried about him. I dropped him at your house last night. Waited for him, see? But he never came out. I thought maybe he'd had an accident. Yes. All right, you come round here at 10.30. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Only two 1938 Delahays answering that description in registered ownership. Good work, my son. You keep it up. <laughs> Baron de Gonfalon and a garage in the Rue Barroger called Dieu Donné. I'm looking for Dede. Uh, what do you want him for? It's about a car. What car? Dede knows. Well, he's on a job. Will he be back soon? Oh, but I'll see. Hello? Mom here? Mom, is Dede there? Oh, Cleo. 
No, Cleo. He went out on a job. Well, I'm looking for Bob. Uh -huh. I'm at his place now. Uh -huh. The swine. He said he would meet me here last night and he didn't show up. Uh -huh. Well, it's the last time he plays this on me because I am not moving from here until he gets back. And you can tell him that from me. Ah, uh, don't you worry, Cleo. You know what Bob is. Don't I? Yes. Yes, that's right. Well, who are these two merchants, Jean anyway? Saval. Hey, who? It's a picture you once published in your magazine. I'm trying to trace him. Yeah, what are you up to? Oh, shut up. Bob Danceval? Yeah, sure, we used to know him. The Count. Yeah, one of the crazy ones. Yeah. He used to race for Delahays until he had that crack up at Nürburgring. Hmm? Where? Oh, now you're asking. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Denise! They're trying to trace Bob Danceval, the Count. Do we know where he is? Oh. He used to be in the Avenue de Neuilly. 110, I think. I didn't know he was still alive. We think he's at 110 Avenue de Neuilly. Yeah. If you find him, give him my love, will you? Tell him we thought he was dead. What you got? Hello. How's the fun factor? Huh? All right. This is the Rue Bercy. I've dug out the bullet for you. Ah, uh, woman's toy, eh? A toy can kill if it finds the heart. Mm. It's a mess, isn't it? But what are all those scars? He's been knocked about in his time. Ribs, pelvis, both tibias, cranium. Motor smash. A what? Business. Big business. I've got to go out again. Anyone want me? Well, there was a fellow, yeah. He was asking about... Uh... What was he asking about? Yeah. Where's our pin-up? It's gone. That fellow must have taken it. Fellow? Who was it? Well, he said he was a friend of Bob's. Yeah, what did it look like? Well, uh, he was a young fella. He had a shorty raincoat. And he wore a hat with a broad band. Shorty raincoat? Yeah. Yeah, I know him. I think he's a cop. What? What else did he say? Nothing else. He just uh, went. Ah, that's right. Cleo was phoning. She was looking for Bob. Oh, she's angry. Bob stood her up last night, and she's at his place waiting for him. Did he hear all this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Finds it before I do, she'll blow the gaff. So you're back. And where the hell do you think you... Daddy! Come on. Well, where's Bob? 
Do you know that swine stood me up again last night? Yes, I know. Now, come on. Daddy, will you stop grabbing me now? What's happened? The cops have happened. They'll be after you and me. Well, where's Bob? Look, there's no time. I'll explain later. Where's Daddy? Who? I saw him come in. Sorry, chum. Oh, that's all. I, um, I'm just holding the fort for you. Are they through with you? Through with me? No, I'm still in the stand. Is this all for me? Yes, Patrol. I'm afraid it's been a quiet morning. All right, give me some of that, will you? Yes, at once, Patrol, at once. The Terrence. Oh, um, pardon. Um, excuse me, Petro. Where's Luca? He's been out on that murder job all the morning, Petro. Ah, oh, here he is. He's just coming out. The Petro. Ah, hello. Uh, you finished? No, I haven't. Monsieur de Gasque is in his best form. Can you enlighten us, Chief Inspector, as to why you arrested the accused even before you'd found the body? We suspected that uh, he committed a misdemeanor, Monsieur le Président. Ah, really? And by what process of uh, divination did you arrive at that conclusion? Because he was running away from us, monsieur, covered in blood and firing a gun. Oh, adieu <laughs> until tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you missed your vocation. Uh, where, what, uh, where have you been enjoying yourself? In the morgue, at the Rue Bercy killing. Uh. Just as the body was done from a car. Shot between midnight and four. Gang work? Odd sort of gang. You had a 22 pistol. Mm. Sounds more like a jealousy killing. Beer and sandwiches coming up, Petron. And here's some more homework for you. Where'd that come from? Yeah, mm. That will, uh, Le Point got it from somewhere. But that's him. That's, a, that's the man I just seen the body in the morgue. A Rue Bercy. Who is he? Well, that's uh, Dulcival. Le Point was trying to find him. He didn't say why. Where is Le Point? I don't know, Petron. All I know is he's been quiet for the last hour. Tied up like that. <laughs> Did Bob tie you up? <laughs> <laughs> you do look funny. <laughs> oh, I bet you're choking in that. <laughs> well, well, all right, then. Oh, 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 Thank you. Oh, would you please get the rest of this off me? I don't know whether I should. If Bob tied you up, I bet he had a good reason. It wasn't Bob. It was two other people. What other people? One of them was called Dede. Oh, well, that settles it. He's Bob's best friend. Hey, if you don't untie me, I'm going to shout for help. <laughs> You'd look a bit silly, wouldn't you? You like that and me like this. Look, I I'm a police officer. That's what you say. Well, who was the other one, then? The other who? The other one who tied you up. Oh, I don't know. It was a girl. <coughs> oh, was it? <laughs> I bet it was that thin one, the one who calls herself Cleo. She's mad about Bob. <laughs> I don't care. How do you know Bob? He's a count, isn't he? That's nothing. I know lots of counts and people. You'd be surprised. They come around all the time. Close your eyes, I'm dressing. Yeah. 
You can look now, if you like. Like it? Well, that's the dress. Oh, oh it's very nice. <sighs> you don't think I've got a bit too much here? No. Or here? No. <laughs> no, you're just about right. <laughs> but, uh, won't Mademoiselle Gendreau miss it? No, she gave it to me herself. You are a policeman. Yes, I am, and you'd better untie me, quick. <gasps> Come on. <laughs> now, what's your name? Germaine. I'm, I'm her maid. At least I was. But she left for America this morning and Monsieur Richard shut up the house. Why? Oh, gather their rows, I expect. <laughs> All the others went home to the country. But not me. None after Paris. Bob said he can get me into films any time I want. Well, now's his chance. Is that where you met the Count d'Anceval at the Jean Drou house? I, I don't know. I don't know anything. Did he come round often, late at night, to see Mademoiselle Lisa? Uh, no, they, they told me... Not to say anything. Is that why she gave you that dress? No! I... <laughs> I, I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> not until, until Bob gets here. <laughs> I don't think he's coming, Germain. I think he's dead. The apologies are really due from me, Inspector. I'm afraid I was a bit brutal with the young man. I hope he didn't get into serious trouble. He's been, uh, suspended. Ah, yeah. I should have liked to offer our apologies to Mademoiselle Jean de as well. Yes, it's most unfortunate. Was it a sudden decision of going off to America? <laughs> well, we're used to that. Another drink before you go, Inspector. Uh, thank you, no. Uh, what a splendid portrait. Mm. Yes, it's my grandfather, Hector Gendre. He founded the firm. Mm. Your father, I believe, is still alive, monsieur. Oh, yes, very much so. But he takes no part in the direction of the firm. He prefers the Dolce Vita. Mm. Perhaps he's wise. Well, thank you, monsieur. You've been uh, most understanding. Oh, uh... I wonder if I may mention this. Uh, from time to time, the police get certain information, you know, of a confidential nature. I believe you know a man called Count Robert Danzabal. Very well indeed. He's a member of my club. Why do you ask? Well, it seems he's got uh, mixed up with some rather shady business. I'm indescribably shocked. He comes of a very good family. Mm. Well, this need go no further, monsieur. No, of course not. Purely a warning. Oh, thank you. Uh, Louis, the inspector is leaving. Have you ever received the count here, monsieur? Uh, once or twice. Last night? I don't think so. Uh, Louis, did Count Danceval come here last night? No, monsieur. Oh. Mm. Did you wish to find Count Danceval? Oh, we know where he is. It's just that uh, he's not talking. Once again, thank you, monsieur. Did you get what you wanted, Dee Dee? Well, what's the matter? Haven't you seen 80,000 francs before? Oh, where did you get it? Monsieur Chandra gave it to me. Monsieur Chandra gave you 80,000 francs? Yeah. Why? For keeping quiet about Bob. Well, did you threaten him? Well, I let him know he'd be wiser to pay. Did he? Money. Bob's dead. I don't know how he was killed or why he was killed, but he's dead. You loved him, so did I. You... You loved him. You loved him and you left him in that house to die. All I heard was a shot. I wasn't going to hang around with that cop talking cars everywhere. I didn't even know what had happened so until this morning when Bob didn't turn up in his room. Then I guessed. Put him in the safe, Mark. Daddy, you can't take it. You'll have the police on our necks. It's blackmail. Blackmail? Hell, it's easy money. Listen, this is the way Bob would have paid if I'd have been killed. 
80,000. <laughs> oh, I bet Bob's laughing wherever he is. Ready! Look! Oh, look what's coming. How did you get loose? I'm making inquiries into the disappearance of Count Robert d'Anceval, believed murdered. No. Poor old Bob. And I'm taking you in for questioning. You don't say. You're all under arrest. Get the car, Kale. We'll take him with us. I'll get the money. <laughs> oh. Daddy! Luca! Get him! Go oh. back! All right, I'll take him. This is my case. You bet your life it is. You get him. But watch it. He's big. Oh. Easy, easy. <laughs> good boy, good boy. Come on, Daddy! Seen that portrait of old Hector? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's your answer. Like father, not like son. Oh. oh, I was a sad disappointment to him. I preferred the girls and this. <sighs> oh, but Richard and Lisa, he was pleased with them. They were throwbacks to the true stock. So he passed me over and willed the business to them. Just the pair of them? Well, equal shares. Oh, Richard's taking care of her share until she's 25. Then she can do what she pleases, sell out or take a seat at the boardroom table. <laughs> That's what Richard's afraid of most of all, when she gets her first taste of power. Like blood, you know, blood to a tiger. Oh, I hate my children. What happens if she uh, gets married first? Ah, that's different. You're a very intelligent man. Yes, there was that clause in the will. Oh, well, Hector wasn't going to see half the business go to some fortune hunter. So, if Lisa marries before she's 25, then control stays with Richard. He keeps everything in his own hands. Hmm, and when will she be 25? <laughs> in two months' time. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-five, seventy, seventy-five thousand. Hey, it was eighty thousand when I tried it, sticky fingers. Yeah. Where'd you get this money? Well, there was this horse, see? Daisy May, little darling. Comes in on a two fifty to one accumulator. Just give me five minutes alone with him. You want to watch that lip chum, nasty. Listen, you... you see how Le Point's getting on with his broken head. Yes, I think I'd believe the loot. Yeah. All right, now, let's be nice and, and gentle, hmm? Why did Richard Jean Drou give you that money? At the name of the bookie. Here, here, now, what's going on? But, but you've got to let me go. I'm, I'm on a case. I, I've got important evidence. You have a nasty bang on the head. Now, you just stay where you are. Quite right. Oh, yes, indeed. But, you time down if he gives you any trouble. I brought you some grapes. How are you? Listen, listen. Huh? Jean Drou killed the Count, or his sister. One of them did it. The Count was Lisa's lover. I've got proof. I've got a witness. A witness, have you? Who? Germaine, the maid. Oh, where is she now? 
I've got her at my sister's apartment. She's waiting for me. Your sister's apartment. Right, I'm on my way. The poor lad's delirious now. You give him a sedative, will you, to calm him down? Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Come back. No, no, no. Nurse, but nurse, help me. He's yeah, pinching no, my no, case. No, no. Easy, young man. No. All right, all right. You want it the hard way, you have it the hard way. You were dots about Pip and Procura, up to your neck in whatever shady business he was at. So I killed him? You're number one on any list. Good. Half oh, He denies he drove it. To the John the House, denies he was there when the plant arrived. Denies. I had a flooded carburetor. Petrol, I found the key witness. The Jean Drew maid. She can swear that Dulcival was in the house last night. You found it? Uh, well, uh, Le Pont did to begin with. He was trying to conceal her in his sister's apartment. Bring her in. Right, Petrol. Come on, in you come. Petron, Germaine Duval. She used to let Dulcival in through a private door that led to Lisa's suite. Did you let him in last night? Hmm? Who brought him? Did Monsieur Jean Drou pay you to keep this quiet? I didn't know it was wrong, Monsieur. Mm. Get her statement. A pleasure, Patron. Will I go to prison? Not if you're a good girl. And tell the truth to that nice officer. Thank you, Monsieur. Come along. Now, I'll have it. Yep. Bob was there. I took him. He was Lisa Gendreau's lover, yes? And how? I used to drop him off there two or three nights a week. Her brother wasn't supposed to know, but he did. How do you know that? Well, Bob told me. The whole dirty trick. The idea was to get Lisa so infatuated with Bob that she'd run off and get married. Did he agreed to this? He couldn't help it. Jandro had the scissors on him for, for some forged checks. He could put him in jail any time he wanted. Checks? I hope this makes sense to you, Pat. Oh, yes, it's beginning to. It's been a fight for power. Jandro and his sister, by any means he could, to stop her getting control of the family empire. Now, there's only one way he could do that, by marrying her off before she was 25. He found the right man. Darcival, someone already in his power. The forged checks. Mm-hmm. And last night, Le Point did stumble on something, some kind of a showdown between the three of them. Do you think the sister found out and shot Darcival? Maybe. Darcival's dead and the sister's in America. There's only one man who can tell us. Chief Inspector Maigret, monsieur. Come in, gentlemen. Monsieur? We have reason to believe that Count Robert d'Anzeval was in this house last night. Louis, I think you'd better stay. Also, that he met his death here. Have you anything to say on that? Yes. I hope it won't disappoint you. I'm afraid that I was less than frank with you this afternoon, Inspector. I knew about d'Anzeval and his clandestine visits to my sister. I was horrified and determined to stop them. Oh, Dan Saval just laughed at me. And then the means came into my hands to force him <clears throat> to break the liaison. These four checks which he had uttered. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of letting Dan Saval see where I kept them. Louis, I think you better tell the rest. It was last night, monsieur, about one o'clock. I hadn't gone to bed because I was waiting for Monsieur Felician. He uh, sometimes needs help. I was in my kitchen and heard a noise from Monsieur Richard's study. I had this gun. Your own? It belonged to Mademoiselle Lisa. She had given it to me to clean. Go on. I, I came in here with the gun in my hand. The room was in darkness. But I saw a figure against the window. It was breaking into the desk, Monsieur. As you can see, Inspector, it was the purest misadventure. My butler mistook the count for a burglar, which indeed he was. You concealed his death from the police, monsieur. Oh. Louis is an old and faithful servant who was trying to protect me. I tried in my turn to protect him. And I must admit that I was afraid of starting an unsavory scandal in respect of my sister. And that much I must confess. Luca, take the faithful servant to the car. We'll get his statement at headquarters. After you, monsieur. What will happen to him? With good lawyers, nothing. You'll have them. I presume you will require these as evidence. Thank you, monsieur. And what hold do you have over Louis? More forgeries? Or something worse? 
That would be quite big, wouldn't it, to make him take the blame for his master's crime? Oh, you're wrong, Inspector. I didn't kill Danceval. No, I think your sister did. But I think she meant the bullet for you. That's correct. You see, Inspector, in choosing Danceval, I made a mistake. That's curious. I was sure I knew his price. But Dancebell was a forger, drunk, penniless waster. But when it came to the pinch, a Dancebell. Yes, the shreds that a man will cling to when he's thrown away everything else. Would you believe it, Inspector? He had a fortune within his grasp, and he knew I could send him to prison for these checks. But the price wasn't big enough. Suddenly, he had to be afflicted with pride. And he betrayed me. To your sister? Yes. Louis called me last night. It was about one o'clock this morning, and uh, he said my sister wanted to see me in her room. And when I went in, she was pointing the gun at me. I danced about, I was grinning. I thought she was play-acting. When he saw that she wasn't, he tried to get the gun away from her. You might say that he died to save my life. I could arrest your sister for manslaughter. In the face of Louis' confession, he could be made to retract. Don't count on that. Why have you told me all this? Because it pleases me that you should know the truth and to know that there is nothing on this earth that you can do about it. Don't count on that either, monsieur. And remember, monsieur jean that in your jungle, there are other forms of justice. <laughs> I've seen the public prosecutor. What happened? I know how you feel, Lapointe, but I'm afraid there's very little more that we can do. What? I told him the whole story. He listened very patiently, and then he said, in the face of Louis' confession, there's no case against Jean Drault or his sister that will stand up in court. But we know Louis had nothing to do with the shooting. Uh, we know. What proof have we got? None. Louis will go for trial, but uh, as he was apparently protecting his master's property, I suppose he'll get off. Well, so he should. But Jean Drou, can he really get away with it? Ah, uh, has he? Look at it this way. There's one thing that Jean Drou wants from this life. Power. Complete personal control of his empire. And now he's lost it. That sister is. She's always hated him, and now she'll never let him forget what he tried to do to her. Can't you see them facing each other across the family board table? Hate in their eyes. What did her father say? Like blood to a tiger. Oh, my money will be on the female. Oh, no. John Drew hasn't won. His punishment's still to come, and he knows it. In fact, I wouldn't be in his shoes now for all the grocery shops in France. Yeah, I see what you mean. Mm. What worries me is, you've tasted power now. 